Hello, and today I would like to talk about the solver. So the solver is a very powerful node because it allows you to do calculation that are determined by the previous frames. So if I dive inside, I have a previous frame, as I mentioned, and first or four inputs. So I can see the four inputs here. And this is actually a headed dot network because if I dive up here, I can see that it's a dynamic operator. And the reason why I can use all the uh, sub node the sub nodes is because I have a sub solver here. So let's say I can use a transform here because it's a sub solver. So just to give you more explanation here, the initial state, I'll talk about the initial state. So I have an example here where I'm fetching the pickhead or let's fetch the sphere. And I have just a simple animation, just a orbiting animation, just a simple VEX code. You can uh, check it out in the project file. And here I'm using a solver. So what happens here? is that in this case I'm fetching as initial state or the first frame because at frame one the previous frame doesn't exist and the reason why I'm saying at frame one because the simulation or the solver starts evaluating at frame one so at frame one we have no data from the previous frame so the previous frame will fetch the data from the initial state so in this case the sphere or we can fetch the picket and now you can see uh, my bad here that we're fetching the picket but what happens if I remove this here now you can see that the picket removes or disappears and what happens right now is the previous frame will take the first input as its previous frame only at the starting frame so in this case one so I think that I hope that makes sense and in this case uh, we're just merging it so I can show you here this is the previous frame this is the current frame you can see previous like so previous frame current frame and we're merging it, but that doesn't make sense. So let me actually restart this. Yep. Previous frame. Now I'm adding the sphere and now we get that new thing. Now if I continue, we can see that now that merged frame or that merged data is has now become the previous frame and the new sphere has moved again. And that's how we get this trail effect. So I would also like to uh, show you uh, on a so I, ha I have just a single point here and uh, I'm going to remove this and if I start the simulation at frame 47 if you understood this right we should have 48 points which we have because if I show you at frame 1 we have two points because we're fetching essentially two identical points together or merging but if I don't want this to happen I can uh, set this to initial state and I'm um, I essentially have the directory of this null here and the null has no data or nothing. The null doesn't contain anything. So now if I look at frame 13, I'm just going to have 13 points because the initial state is essentially nothing. It's just a empty null. So I hope that makes sense. And I would like to hop into another example where I don't have time to go over this, but what I'm just doing, I'm taking the uh, position of my, uh, or the position of the sphere and essentially setting it as a uh, position of the previous frame sphere only to keep the uh, position from the previous frame in the y-axis and then I'm just adding the gravity so what happens here I actually uh, decreased this by 8 or divided it by 8 because I felt it was too strong but the actual in real life the uh, gravitational acceleration is minus or not minus but it's 9.81 and if you multiply it by time, you actually get physically accurate gravitational uh, pull or strength. Uh, I didn't add a uh, mass or a resistance because I was taking this up in a vacuum and for simplicity's sake. So, so just for you to understand, objects fall the same speed regardless of their weight. So a feather and a rock, if you're in an environment where there's no friction or no air, they will fall with the same speed. So in this case, I don't need to add mass, air, or anything because I'm considering this is in a vacuum. So, and then I'm just adding it to the position. In this case, position in the y-axis. So what happens is I get a sphere that's spiraling and falling at the same time. And just to prove to, your, uh, to you that uh, the actual gravitational strength increases, we can see that the sphere is now, it, it starts with a pretty subtle uh, gravitational pull and as we 
move pa move by time, we can see that the sphere falls quicker, quicker, or faster, faster, and so on. Which you can see also on the spring that the spring gets more stretched out. So I have here I have a last uh, example where I have just a sphere. Uh, let me move, which I just animated, nothing special. And in this case, I'm doing something very, very similar. I'm taking the position of each point, uh, setting a vector of a gravity, which in this case, I set it to minus four again, because I felt like it was too strong. And I'm creating a gravity uh, attribute. So this is just going to be a vector. And if you can see that the gravity actually grows by time. And the reason is that's how gravity would work in this case. And what I'm doing here is I'm fetching the uh, current position to the previous frame. So essentially what I'm doing, if I remove this, I'm essentially uh, always rewriting the position with the animation. So nothing actually happens here. But now if I add the gravity, so in this case, you can think of it uh, that I'm only working on the gravity. So essentially I have a gravity attribute, which I sh could theoretically use outside the solver. So this entire solver is only working on the gravity attribute here because only the gravity is uh, being uh, evaluated by the solver. Of course, those kind of scenarios and those kind of simple uh, examples are doable without the solver because those are essentially growing constantly at a rate which I can't predict. Like I can, for example, predict where the sphere will be, let's say, at frame 46 without evaluating all the frames before. It only takes more of more thinking into consideration. But yeah, solvers could be very powerful, but they're very heavy uh, for calculation. So always rethink if you can do the certain operation without a solver, it's always better to do it without the solver. But solvers could be very powerful and they can help you in tasks which are unrecreatable without the solver. So yeah, you can always check the project file and I think there are a few good examples as I shown here. And you can see that this works the same way as a top network would work or a particle simulation or a falling ball. I'm just trailing it here to demonstrate the natural curve you would get from a throwing ball while using a gravitational pull. So I hope to learn something new and I'll see you again. Bye.